We feel like these are things, our body is against us and we need to sort of medicate and suppress and ignore and feel guilty or angry about it. When actually, when you sort of peel back the layers, you realize that all of these symptoms that you feel are your body telling you, hey Sam, there are glucose spikes happening underneath your skin. Like, please, we're trying to tell you that you need to do something about it. But your body's speaking a language that often you don't understand. In order to talk about insulin, we need to talk about what happens in our body when the glucose spike is taking place. There, there's two main things that happen that damage our body. The first one is that glucose, once it hits your bloodstream, what it's gonna try to do is it's gonna wanna go into every single cell in your body and it's gonna head to your mitochondria because your mitochondria are the powerhouses that turn glucose into energy. So when glucose floods your system during a glucose spike, it all heads to the mitochondria in your cells. The problem is your mitochondria, they don't respond very well to this big wave coming their way. They kind of shut down. They right. throw in the towel, out the towel. I can't remember what the expression is, but <laughs> they're like, I can't deal with this. And they shut down and they sort of go on strike. It's too much for them to handle. And as your mitochondria shut down, these little um, molecules are produced called free radicals. And free radicals damage us because anything they touch, they hurt. So for example, if they touch your DNA, they can create mutations in your DNA that could lead to the development of cancer. Right. If they touch like the membrane of one of your cells, they make a hole in the membrane and they just damage everything. And your body, in order to try to protect you against the free radicals, it creates an inflammation response, which is like an immune system response. Right. And unfortunately, if this happens all the time, then you have chronic inflammation in your body. And that's not good because it leads to many of the health problems that we all encounter every day. For sure. So that's the first thing, the mitochondria going on strike. The second thing that happens is that every single molecule of glucose in your body, it's running around. It's like kids on a playground. It's like bumping into everything, just like, you know, dashing around. And every time a glucose molecule bumps into another molecule in your body, it damages it. It does what's called it glycates it, glycation. Mm -hmm. And glycation is the same thing as what happens when you put a piece of toast in the toaster. It's literally cooking or browning. That's glycation. And on the inside, underneath our skin, the faster we glycate, the faster we age, the faster we die. Glycation is aging. And so with every extra glucose spike you experience, you age faster. And this shows up on your face, you get more wrinkles, mm -hmm. but it also internally is the process by which all of your organs get damaged and literally you eventually die. Like when you're fully cooked, you die. So your body knows these two things are happening, the mitochondria on strike and the glycation, and it's gonna try to protect you against these things. So what it does, when your body feels a glucose spike happening, it sends out insulin. Mm -hmm. And insulin's purpose is to store glucose away into neutral forms where it cannot do the damage anymore. And so insulin stores glucose into your liver, into your muscles, and then when those are full, into your fat cells. And that's one of the ways that you put on weight. So insulin is really just your body's uh, protection mechanism against too much glucose. But too much insulin also leads to type 2 diabetes. So it's a whole, it's a whole cycle. Yes, for sure. Okay, you explain that. All just so beautifully. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about glucose specifically in relation to female hormones and what's mm -hmm. happening there. So the main connection between glucose and female hormones is the following. When there's too much glucose in your system and there's too much insulin in your system, this excessive insulin goes to your ovaries and tells your ovaries to produce more testosterone, mm -hmm. which is the male sex hormone, right? number one. Number two, when there's a lot of insulin around, your body can no longer effectively transform testosterone into female hormones. So you're left with this excess of male hormones in your female body. And that causes most notably polycystic ovarian syndrome. Right. And this means you can miss your periods, your ovaries can become burdened with cysts, you can start getting hair on your chin, you can start balding, 
And that's really like the main association. And PCOS is becoming so common. I think it's over one in eight women that have been diagnosed with this. And there are other reasons for PCOS, but the main one seems to really be this state of too much insulin in the body. And this is why when women study their glucose levels, they often see a reversal of those symptoms. Okay, I love that. So speaking of symptoms, I know that, you know, you've mentioned before you're basically like your, it's how your body talks to you, right? It, yeah. It's your body's communicating to you. It's telling you these symptoms to like, hey, pay attention to me, right? So let's break that down a, a little bit further and how how is your body really communicating to you? Well, there are many symptoms that we tend to medicate, you know, whether it's poor energy level, migraines, acne, psoriasis, polycystic ovarian syndrome, like all of these things, weight gain, we feel like these are things, our body is against us and we need to sort of medicate and suppress and ignore and feel guilty or angry about it. When actually, when you sort of peel back the layers, you realize that all of these symptoms that you feel are your body telling you, hey, Sam, there are glucose spikes happening underneath your skin. Like, please, we're trying to tell you that you need to do something about it. But your body's speaking a language that often you don't understand. But if you start looking at it from that lens, like, oh, for, for example, me, right? My mental health problems. I was like, right. I didn't understand the triggers. I got so upset at myself. And then finally I could see, oh, it's actually one of the reasons this happens is when my glucose levels are way too high and my body's trying to tell me something's wrong. So that, to me, that realization was really life-changing. And For I think sure. it helps us become kinder to ourselves. You know, and when something does come up to be like, okay, let me take a second and see what's happening, how I can solve it um, instead of getting angry and upset and ashamed. For sure. For sure. And I think like it's such a great opportunity to connect with your intuition and really just discover more about your body. Because I think so many of us are just like, oh my God, I have acne. Well, how do I cover this? What do I take to fix this? Right. It's like this immediate thing we just want a Band-Aid approach for which as many of us know, long-term, it's never going to be the solution. So really taking that yeah. time to tune in is going to be so important. We have to become like our own, our own doctors. Ways we can actually reduce this glucose spike. People might be like, mm-hmm. so does this mean I can never have my cake again? Can I never no. eat my pizza again? Like, what no. do I actually do to reduce this glucose spike? Um, so this is one of the most beautiful things actually about this whole thing is that in order to flatten your glucose curve, so avoid the spikes, you don't have to give up all the starchy and sweet foods you love. And this is why people really like, you know, what I share in the science that I explain. It's because it's not restrictive. It doesn't ask you to go on a diet. Um, What I share are principles. So for example, number one principle, eat your food in the right order. So next time you have a meal in front of you, sort of look at it and look at its ingredients. And if you eat the ingredients of that meal in a specific order, you'll reduce the glucose spike of the meal by 75%. That's large. So you're, yeah, so you're yeah. still eating the exact same foods, but the order in which you eat them has a huge impact on whether it's going to cause harm in your body or not. So the magic order is vegetables first, and I'll explain why in a sec, mm-hmm. proteins and fats second, starches and sugars last. So let's say you have, you know, some salmon, some broccoli, some quinoa, and I don't know, an apple or a cookie. The right order is to start with the broccoli, then the salmon, then the quinoa, then the cookie. Now, of course, you can mix them a little bit, but try to front load all the vegetables and try to keep all the starches and sugars till the end. And the reason this works is because the fiber in the vegetables, if it lands in your stomach first, and if it lands in your intestine first, it has the time to create this amazing protective situation. And what it does is it coats the inside walls of your intestine with this viscous fibrous mesh. And this mesh then protects your body from absorbing too much glucose coming down afterwards. So the glucose that's in that quinoa and that cookie, you will absorb less of it into your bloodstream if there was fiber there first to create the protective mesh. I love that. So you can still move around your plate, but you're saying at least start with the veggies first. Yeah. And there are so many more things you can do too. Um, Another really popular one is after you eat, move. So after each one of your meals for 10 minutes, 
use your muscles somehow. And it can be dancing to your favorite song. It can be walking the dog. It can be folding your laundry. It can be playing with your kids, like whatever. Use your muscles for 10 minutes within the hour that follows your meal. Because mm -hmm. if you do that, your muscles, as they contract, they're going to need energy to do that. Right. And the first place they'll look is in your bloodstream. So if there's glucose coming in from that meal you just had, and then you use your muscles, they will blunt the glucose spike because they'll, they'll use the glucose as it comes through. Um, and last one I can share, and then feel free to, <laughs> we can talk about more, of course, but vinegar. That's yes, one that was that on my list love. to ask you. Where does vinegar fit into the equation? Yeah. So vinegar is amazing. It actually has scientifically proven superpowers, which is very cool and was very surprising to me when I first discovered it, to be honest. So if you have a tablespoon of vinegar before your meals in a tall glass of water, um, you will curb the glucose spike of that meal by up to 30%. Crazy. Just by drinking some vinegar before the meal. And that's for two reasons. One, the vinegar actually slows down the breakdown of starches and sugars into glucose in your stomach. And second, your vinegar also acts on those muscles we were just talking about. And it tells your muscles to become extra hungry for glucose. Mm -hmm. It literally tells your muscles, please soak up glucose as it arrives into the bloodstream and store it, but at a higher pace. So it sort of like... It, it sort of tricks your muscles into thinking they're exercising. And so they store more glucose more quickly. So as a result, smaller spike. And of course, this is cool for the spike. But also, what does that mean for us? It means that we have fewer cravings because we don't have a glucose crash afterwards. For sure. We have less inflammation. You know, there's less harm done to our hormones, less likelihood of weight gain, slower toasting, slower aging. So, um, yeah, that's a really powerful one. And in Glucose Revolution, I share 10 hacks. So that's three. But there are many more cool ones. Amazing. And so do you mean like any kind of vinegar, apple cider vinegar? Yeah. Any kind of vinegar works because the molecule that actually has the effect is called acetic acid and it's the main molecule in vinegar. So balsamic is a bit less recommended just because it has some sugar left over. Right. So more on the sweet side. Exactly. So, you know, top choices are apple cider vinegar, white wine vinegar, cherry vinegar, rice vinegar. I personally love the just traditional apple cider vinegar, but you don't have to use it if you don't like it. And then if you don't want to drink it, because it's kind of a weird acquired taste to make this vinegar drink, you can also just use it in the dressing for, let's say, a vegetable starter that you have. Right. Um, you can mix it with other stuff, with olive oil, with lemon, with salt. It doesn't change anything. Okay. Awesome. That's a really great hack. I love it. 